Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy man, Chan, co host, Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be talking about some watch list results in the modern age rotation. And of course, X of Swords is in full swing. Or should I say, Ten of Swords is in full swing, as per the Scott Porter way of saying things. This is episode 421. Howdy, howdy, let's get ratty. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do six I people it? think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Hey Google, back some Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. Find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Dreaming always in the studio is, is the man from Canada himself, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? My bones are metal, Calder. <laughs> Who's He's Simeon? A... I'm right, <laughs> right. I don't know who Simeon is. I never had. Yeah, we have a special yeah. guest Wolverine in the studio. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hopefully, you guys have watched. So, if you guys have watched the unboxing, that's great. If you guys haven't seen the bloopers that we put up as a YouTube short and uh, also on our TikTok. Um, yeah, yeah. It's very sad. Yeah. I know, I know. There's a huge demographic of people that. Are on TikTok and play Hero Clicks. It's just, it's weird. Not a huge fan. Like I personally don't have a TikTok. Uh, luckily, right. Our our beautiful editor editor and uh, producer is running the TikTok so that me and Calder can remain untainted Clean. by his. Uh, <laughs> by don't his have to go in that. Yeah, that cesspool. Um, but no, yes, yeah, it's. it's it is weird how many comments and how many like likes and uh, follows and stuff that we've gotten in such a short amount of time for posting almost zero actual HeroClix content on uh, uh, right. our, our HeroClix TikTok account. But yes, um, if you haven't seen the bloopers from our X of Swords, Ten of Swords unboxing, they're pretty fun. They're pretty fun. Yeah. yeah. It's just extended uh, Wolverine cut is all director's right. cut, if you will. Uncut Wolverine. I like the fact he's really good at cutting things. So it's it's true. It is what it is. Uh, but yeah, if you really haven't checked out our X of Swords unboxing, we opened a lot of cool stuff. We opened the Legacy Iceman uh, card. We opened the Annihilation Chase. Uh, I believe Arcade is also a new super. We opened like a lot of cool stuff, and it was just a fun time. You Arcade, guys get a like. Yeah. There's even, stuff that like had been we'll seen other places, but like top highlights for me from that brick were. Arcade's super cool, just to get back in Hero Clicks in general, because he hasn't been clicked since AVAS, and that one yeah. was kind of wonky. This one actually doesn't really reward you, but it doesn't, like... The previous one was, like, you didn't win map, ah, you wasted those points. Like, you just really straight sucks. wasted yeah, those Yeah, it was ones. a big 70 points you wasted, yeah. too. Uh, this one's, like, you didn't win map. It's actually almost better in some cases. Uh, like, thematically, like, if I'm playing yeah, I mean, casually... Yeah. I want to win map with him so that I can just power action generate murder bots. But if I don't win map, then it's like free. That one was really cool. We had already seen the Deadpool, but seeing like the sculpt up close was really fun. Um, I was just happy we pulled him. Uh, and obviously yeah. we're giving him away, which is cool. Um, but man, I, I, I didn't want to mess around and play with that Deadpool. Such a fun, yeah. like, cool if you dial. want to know how to enter to win to uh, that Deadpool super rare, um, it will have to be postponed until the set releases, obviously. Right. But once the set releases, anyone that commented on our unboxing will get entered into a uh, random number generator and we'll pick one random comment, we'll message that person, and that will be the person that wins that super rare Deadpool. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so we opened that one. We opened a couple different swords, the tarot cards, like seeing the tarot yeah, cards for the first cards. time was cool. Um, the actual size and like the artwork and stuff. I would say it was surprising, but it wasn't surprising. I had already seen that they were kind of cool images and stuff anyhow, so I was expecting yeah. it to look cool, and it did look cool. But, no, yeah. No. Um, well, let's start off with what made us happy this week. Yeah. So, uh, you want to do it? 
I bet you can't guess, but uh, no, traveling to Sioux Falls was uh, really cool. So filming for a weekend, um, we didn't get a ton of stuff done, but I'm really proud of the stuff that we did get done. I had a ton of fun. Yeah. Uh, it was two very late nights in a row, and um, it was. I also got to like head over to Rainbow Comics and play like a 400 Silver Age thing. So I busted out like a full WWE team uh, with only a few accoutrements. So that was fun. <laughs> um, I got s- pretty much stomped like the whole time. Uh, I don't think I won. I got real close to winning against a Strange Supreme, uh, but. Yeah, didn't Ooh, manage nice. to didn't manage to cinch like the deal there. Um, then the other ones, I think I just kind of got like curb stomped, but that was really fun. Um, seeing everybody, everybody's like great response to our our unboxing was awesome. Like the that was huge. It was one of our me and Calder's most watched videos for the channel uh, ever, yeah. and it, it's on track to be one of like the highest dial H videos of all time at some point maybe uh but that was really fun um man i'm trying to think oh i've also been playing for non-hero clicks what made me happy i've been playing uh jedi fallen order jedi something fallen order whatever the uh the weird little cow kid and i will say not exactly what i was expecting i'm not sure what i was expecting but i came the last star wars game i came from playing uh was force unleashed so i wasn't fully expect- expecting like star killer level power okay yeah but i was expecting more like force use kind of stuff and this game limits you a lot which i actually like thematically because you're not like big powerful jedi dude you're just a jedi like you're one of one of like the ranks of jedi you know like okay. not quite a knight you're technically just like out of padwan hood whatever that would be rank wise uh-huh. i'm sure chance will correct me someday um if he listens anymore but uh no like you're you're not like a great jedi you're just a jedi and it makes the game really interesting because you're not overpowered so you have to be really smart and i i play on like the second to highest difficulty mostly just because okay okay dang send me in flex yeah and, flex and here's here's my thing with that they always say well not always but Newer games have been saying, like, oh, if you just want the story, here's this difficulty. And that's what they call, like, the easy difficulty now is, like, story. Like, just here for the story or whatever. Right. I'm like, it takes me so far out of the story if my character, like, if there's no stakes. If it feels like my character just can't die and I kill stuff really easy. It takes me super out of the story. Now, that's great if I'm playing as, like, Superman or Wolverine. And I just, like, walk through stuff like a breeze because, you know they're overpowered characters in that res- like respect. But in this aspect, it's like I want to fear like the uh inquisitors. Like I really want to like fear facing off against one like oh, I didn't save like recently, like this is bad, you know, that kind of thing. Like I want to like have that fear there. Um but it, no, it's been a fun game. I if you're like into Star Wars, I think you'd enjoy it. It is not super heavy combat it's more like platforming and exploration kind of stuff but there is a decent amount of combat to be had as well um it's also like a weird grind xp kind of game if you want it to be oh really yeah which i i usually hate those kind of games but this one makes it fun enough where once you learn like the enemy's attack set like their move set it's pretty easy to like counter them it's just once okay. you like when you first like run into like a new enemy and you're like, oh gosh, what's it gonna do? Oh, it just turned red. Oh, what's red mean? Oh, no. and, like you know that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah. no, it's it's been a pleasurable experience. I really enjoy playing as a weird little red haired kid, um, uh, who I'm sure will make it to some a Disney Plus show. Disney eventually. Plus show someday. Yeah. yeah. That's the other thing uh, I will say. Awesome. Uh, no characters have been like from previous media so far so at least to me so it's not like they're like ah make sure we throw luke in there make sure like han solo comes up on like a holocrons and like good luck kid we like we really got a ham fist in like all the star wars quotes and stuff so i'm glad that that isn't the case it's all like unique new characters and refreshing yeah his studies and stuff totally new take on everything versus like reference 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 and it's like yeah i get it 
get it. They were in other things. Thank you. Thank you, game. Very cool. Uh, kind of like, what were you telling me, like, last week, where it's like, you know, every Wookiee is Chewbacca. And, yeah. Like, some, you're like, <laughs> these in almost like all that. Star Wars media, they're like, uh, we imprisoned a Wookiee. And it's like, Chewbacca, you get yourself into so many bad situations. What have you been up to? He's like, oh, it's another predicament. <laughs> I can't do Chewbacca. Yeah, 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 yeah that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, the, there's um, the, the sad wah. Wah. Yeah. I can't. I can't do it at all. Um, all right, nice, dude. Uh, what made me happy this week? Yeah, I mean, obviously, big shout outs to the weekend. Uh, love the music. No, but the weekend we had in Sioux Falls hanging out with like Ian and Andrew and the boys uh, down at Rainbow uh, filming and everything. I'm really excited for these videos that you guys will be able to be able to watch. Uh, probably the most fun I had was filming the battle royals of just like battle royals of a new set that no one's had the chance to play with. So like spoiler alert, uh, we're doing battle royals for X of Swords unboxing. So there are two boosters you don't get to see played. Very sad. I know. Um, but that was like so fun, like pre-release product, battle royals with the bros, uh, also, just having a good time. How often do you get to play like a super casual bo- battle royal in that kind of setting? Like it's almost oh, dude, always so prize true. on the line, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like this cutthroat, you know, we had done this, this rule where you can't pass your first turn, you know, like it's, it's way, way more fun. Everybody's just going out there doing whatever. That was a rule. I thought we were just doing. That. Oh, <laughs> I thought I I noticed like that was how we were playing it, but I totally thought that was just like what uh, we were doing. Kind. I of. did like preemptively be like, "Hey guys, come on, let's get it. Come on, let's no no passing turns here." Um, but yeah, I, I will say uh, secondary non like hero clicks thing that made me happy. Definitely hanging out with my family on Fourth of July. Uh, we went to some horse races. That was pretty fun. Did some $2 bets. Did some, like, $10 bets. My sister got uh, almost every race correct that day. Like, out of the five we watched, she got wow. four right. And I was like, you should have been betting money. Oh, my gosh. Well, it helps when you're doping up the horses, Dara. Well, <laughs> hey. She's their, uh, like, horse uh, ketamine supplier. <laughs> what I don't know what vets can do. But well, maybe, ketamine maybe. would definitely slow down the horses. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> I mean, you could uh, you could reverse dope where you dope yeah, all of them but dope. one. Yeah, all the other ones exactly. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. Um, maybe that's what just being a vet, a veterinarian, just tells you. I can see. Yes, that horse will win. He's clearly healthier than the rest. I don't know. Um, so like that was super fun. Uh, me and my little brother. There's at one point in the day where my family was doing some stuff we didn't want to do. So we went to we were in Des Moines, so we went to uh, two of the Jay's CD and Hobby locations down there. I know they do hero clicks there. We didn't play, uh, but they had 25 percent off like action figures and stuff. Which like, oh dude, cool, great sale. What could be more patriotic than uh, buying stuff, <laughs> you know? So we uh, went in. I yeah, yeah consumerism. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I got uh, even more patriotic. I bought some Captain America statues and action figures that I was needing to get 25 percent off. It was like. Just a great, you know, great deal. I did pick up a Wolverine thing. Uh, I love Mighty Mugs. Uh, Mighty Mugs are some of, like, the coolest uh, figures you can get. They're kind of a precursor to Funko Pops, but they're, like, I don't know how to tell you this. They're a thousand times cooler, though. They got, like, um, a tiki-shaped head or something. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, either, but... I don't know. It's big and round. They got a big old round head. Um, but, like, there's almost no sculpting for most Mighty Mugs. Uh, like Wolverine's got his claws, you know, Ghost Rider has like a little flame on his head. Um, but they all fit like the same kind of buck and it's like kind of printed on, but they're hundred percent like recycled like figures, which is really cool. Um, but I've got like a small mighty mug collection. Those are one of my favorite things I like collected growing up. So I had I saw they had a Wolverine one and I was like, Oh, I gotta snag it. That's pretty cool. Especially for like ten bucks, which is like what he cost when he came out like 10, 20 years ago. Uh, yeah. which is great. Um so yeah, bought some action figures. Probably one of the coolest things was we had to drive back to Ames uh, that night for the stay in the hotel. So we didn't really stay at any one place too long for like a fireworks show. But on the drive back, there was a bunch of people shooting off fireworks. So we're driving down the interstate and we just see uh, fireworks to our left and right. And that was so it was really is, cool. Yeah, that is really fun. Like, like that was really neat. I didn't even like think about that. So you know, we we're blaring some like I don't know. Uh, God bless the USA or something. We were playing like some uh, my patriotic playlist or whatever, and it was just, like rolling down the highway, fireworks to your left and your right. 
I was like, this is really, this is really a cool experience, you know, versus watching just one fireworks show. Like, we got to see, like, just across the, the skyline, almost. It was really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, if anyone ever has the opportunity to do that sometime, definitely. I would say next 4th of July, you know, if you want to, you know, I don't want you to miss any specific fireworks show, but, like, it was really, it was really sick. I was like, wow, I'm, like, almost way more happy we did this than, like, try to find bad parking yeah, somewhere and sit, sit on somewhere. sweaty... Yeah, like it was really cool. Um, um, I can't so yeah. remember. I will so a couple things. I will say JD's C- CD and a hobby, uh, or Jay's CD and hobbies. I I can't remember. Um, yep. But Des Moines is, is yeah. home to some of the, like the best collectible stores I've gone into, and I'm saying that as like someone who dearly loves their own like hometown stores. Man, I've seen so many cool things. Like most of the time, I'd never buy any of like the big statues or any of the cool stuff, but. I found so many random things that I never knew existed at those places and they're just, they're huge. They're well organized. Um, like if you want star Wars series, black or black series, whatever that's called. Uh, oh, like yeah. you, I mean, star Wars people know what the term is obviously. Cause it's like the, the collectible line that like they actually collect, but like they've got a huge wall of that. It's just, it's awesome. Um, and then I will also say as far as 4th of July goes, not a big fan this year. Uh, no. My work gave me Monday off, and that meant that I had to be up at 5 a.m. on Tuesday. So oh, <laughs> there was not yeah. really, like, the sun hadn't even set by the time I was, like, at home and, like, going to bed. I was kind of disappointed. Uh, all my neighborhood, yeah, though, like, very hey guys, patriotic. Lots of explosions. Fourth of July is kind of a night-based holiday. Yeah, so I was like, I totally Tuesday would have been off. fine working till like four on the day of, yeah. and then having Tuesday off. So if that's and I get like you know federal holiday yada yada, we got to pay you more right. whatever. But yeah. also just like it's gonna be that way because next year it's on like a Tuesday, and then I think it's on like a. I don't know. I'm just gonna keep going I'm just, down. I'm just gonna say like back on a weekend. It's gonna be a while before like I actually get the day after it off as well. And right. So yeah, disappointed, sad. <laughs> that's all. I'm, that's that's how uh, I end my statement on Fourth of July. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, all right. Let's go ahead. We have a lot to talk about in the news section here, guys. Um, so you guys remember probably some of our excellent fixes or, you know, ideas we said, ah, we won't, we wouldn't change anything. Um, so let's look at what they changed. Uh, let's check it out here. They didn't change as much as I thought they would. I'm kind of cool with most of these changes. Obviously, yeah. I didn't choose all of my perfect changes, uh, but that's okay. So Thanos got reviewed. Uh, this is big old, big old, you know, beefy Civil War. Oh, Civil War. Goodness gracious. Uh, Fantastic Four <laughs> OP kit. Uh, OP. I don't know why I keep thinking it's Civil War OP. I don't know what's wrong with my brain. Uh, the errata was very simple. It was kind of what we all kind of mentioned here, too, was when he uses mind control as free, when he uses it, he has improved targeting, hindering, elevated blocking. So very, very simple. Yeah. Like, instead of being able to choose mind and be able to shoot through it as well, now he only can use mind control. When as he, far uh, as Aratus so go, pretty darn good. I really like when they clean it up with just adding. So they only had to add to his original text. They only had to add when Thanos uses it, he has, and then technically they had to like rewrite the power by putting mind control as free at the front. But I really like when the Aratus are super clean, super easy, and I think this is essentially what they originally had intended. Like maybe not. But I think so, probably. It seems like, yeah. like with the other powers, it seems like this is probably what they had intended, where it would have only worked yeah. when he used the specific one they were talking about. But yeah, <laughs> um, um, I will say it probably won't deter people from playing him. No. Mind control with like a whatever his printed top dial attack is. Oh, uh, 13. Through, yeah, um, 13 very through tiny like little 13. 10 squares. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Like, it's still good. Uh, it's still very good, very potent. Mind control allows you to take control of like their whatever their big beefy attacker is and just deal a ton of damage potentially. So, yeah. 
that one's pretty cool. Um, Sky Tyrant reviewed, right. no change. No Blackheart change. reviewed, no change. So we had listed a couple for these guys. Sky Tyrant, I think, might have been the hardest one to issue an errata for, just because anything they changed definitely so the effect that they were specifically we, looking at i guess we were struggling a lot with trying to figure out what to do for Sky yeah. Tyrant. so you know? they were looking at a speed power which is his flurry charge do not have speed when he hits after resolutions he may move up to half his speed using improved movement characters um they weren't looking at the rest of his traits or anything so it is specifically that power that they're worried about and there's a there's no easy way to change anything about that power without changing right. what he does um, unless you just take away improved movement characters or, or like something small like that uh, he may move up to half his speed value uh, a quarter do we use quarters in the hero clicks move up to I a know right we'll speed like, value. Like, now, I know. move up to a third his speed value or I guess like, I didn't think about this uh, flurry charge do not have speed using his printed uh, combat values that would have been like an okay change too but really like his combat values aren't getting boosted also he has a big whole trait that's like when he attacks he can potentially modify attack by plus one um oh right yeah blackheart also no change and the specific effect that they were reviewing there was the heart of darkness which is the trait where if a character had been ko'd he deals penetrating damage since your last turn he deals penetrating damage now this can be comboed where you can free once per turn for all characters with the trait KO a friendly hellfire club guard and then a character if you KO that guard for free uh, a character has been KO'd since your last turn so you can just on your turn decide that you have pen damage and then it also gives you uh, remove all action tokens from black so, Heart, heal him one you know, click charge or I running shot is free think, all the things like, with all the free stuff like especially the charge or running shot is free at the end of this and then being able to do another thing after it I still think you could have made it a power action to KO a, a guard and then do oh, all yeah. the rest of this stuff honestly you I could still think that would have been totally fine you could probably free choose one uh, remove all action tokens from him heal him one click or use charge or running shot yeah as free like you Split could probably up. just yeah, yeah make it like choose one or I I don't know. I mean, it's a lot. It is still a lot of it stuff you can do. It is just a big block of like effects that he gets. But at the same time, he's giving his opponent 25 points to do this. So, right. I don't know. Not great. No. He's still he's still a little too good, but um yeah, I don't know how they would have changed it. And they didn't. So, <laughs> I guess we'll, we Just may like never that. know. And it's still a mystery. Uh, and then Molecule Man does see a change. So they were looking at his molecular manipulation where he rolls a d6, or he has free smoke cloud, free roll a d6, choose a number of non-debris markers, then range, and up to the result, replaces markers with any combination of hindering water or blocked and terrain markers. That'd be answering your move them all. Uh, so now it is, just get a straight up choose up to three non-debris terrain markers in range. Roll, roll a d6. Uh, maybe I get six, maybe I get one. Now it's just three all the time, period. That's like a straight-up upgrade, it right? Is, yeah, it, it is it, a bug. <laughs> like, I will say, they're, the reason the game is that it also like makes the uh, game go way faster. And, and they did yeah. say, at the same time, it is an upgrade. You know, like they that's not lost in them whatsoever because of the possibility of a one to two result. Yeah. But now it's not the insane four to six. And, you know, like, I mean, this is like if uh, if there's a character that had blades with a printed one and they said, like, instead of rolling a D6, it just does three. It's like that's technically three, yeah. that's an upgrade. Technically, they could have rolled blades and rolled like a four, five, six, but it's better right. to be consistent than it is to be occasionally like on the high end. Um, yeah. I really like this change. I didn't think he super needed a change out of all of them. He's probably the one I hate the most, to be honest. I didn't really think he needed a super big change. Uh, but I will say I like the fact that they were looking at it as like a, how much time does this character take? Because he free, I, you place all the smoke clouds and then free roll a dice and then, you pick from those smoke clouds. It just really gave people like an opportunity to not purposefully, yeah. but unintentionally waste time. So the fact that it's smoke cloud is free 
And so you're going to place your smoke cloud with the intention of three of these that I placed these are going to be the blocking. Are going to be the yeah. blocking. Yeah. So it's it way faster. Yeah. Really liked this change. I'm glad they did it the way they did. Um, it is a boost because it's just consistency over randomness is always like a boost. Uh, next up, the alchemical potion. Man, they tore into this one. Uh, <laughs> it really led into it there. They, yeah, they deleted half the powers that you could have. No, they just, there was no change. There wasn't going to be a change. Um, the only thing I can, after looking at Molecule Man, the only thing I can think is maybe it would have been like not a roll of D6 thing. It would have just been some sort of each turn you like move it or something. But it also like kind of would have followed the alchemical fire ruling which they did change. Uh, so alchemical fire was um, free roll a d6, choose either clockwise or counterclockwise. And so it was only four to choose from. So counterclockwise or counterclockwise, turn the alchemical fire in that direction, a number of effects equal to half the result. So on a five, six, you could turn it uh, clockwise or counterclockwise and basically have your option of the two and then on like a result of a three four, you got stuck on like the opposite end of whatever corner you were on. So like that was the one that you wouldn't really have a choice. And then also on a one two, you could either turn it left or right essentially and have two choices. So it was a lot of like it was a lot easier to choose because there's basically a one third chance that you were gonna get stuck with something that like didn't give you two choices. Uh, how they changed it. When equipped, place the alchemical fire in the circle on front of this card and with the arrow indicator pointing to the effect of your choice. Free, roll a d6. Turn the alchemical fire clockwise. So now there's no counterclockwise. Um, clockwise, a number of effects equal to half the result until you roll again. Attacks made by the equipped character have the listed effect. Uh, then they also changed see it's specifically the bottom right which is the fire token give a hit character a fire token if they don't already have one at the beginning of your turn instead of the beginning of I, each, I turn. each turn each yeah. turn each turn yeah yeah so instead of that effect it is now the beginning of your turn meaning you're dealing half as much damage as you would have previously Which is good because the fire token was yeah was busted. it there's, was it was a bit much there's almost nothing that deals damage at the beginning of both turns like that's seeing a care like a character just auto ko at the beginning of like the friendly to that character's force like turn is a very odd thing to yeah. see and it like with this you definitely saw it more than once um yeah i don't think we need to go into their explanation for it um, obviously it takes a little bit more randomness into it by only turning it clockwise. Like I said before, you could have turned it clown or counterclockwise or clockwise uh, before and had your choice of two options. Now turning right. it clockwise, it's always going to be one through three that you get a, like the choice of, you know, it'll be a five, six, you get three on a three, four, you get two, and on a one, two, you get the first option. But it's always going to spin clockwise. It's going to be a lot less reliable in that respect. And then also, um, I don't think it hurts it too much, but the fire tokens are definitely not, like, broken now. Uh, having a fire token is not nearly as bad as yeah. it would have been when this was every turn. I think for anybody that against it a lot because it was seeing a ton of competitive play like oh, thank goodness i am not just getting absolutely lit up all the time oh so, yeah that is that is a huge and i'm just i'm just glad you know uh fantastic four object had its like time in the sun outside of like that the doom stuff cool. like hey yeah. man good old uh emotional modifier still yeah. here well that's uh man yeah i was gonna say good old diablo actually like had like a a reason to be collected for a hot second. Oh, the prime. Uh, you mean your super obscure Fantastic Four villain? You like? Wow, he made an appearance in no no movie. Marvel don't, don't lie to me. Ultimate don't Alliance. Tell me he was in a movie. Oh, what? That doesn't count. Come on. Was he in Marvel Ultimate Alliance? So, like, that's a hard one because I remember only playing against him with the Fantastic Four, but I can't remember Fantastic Four being like a huge part of the first one. I don't yeah. know. He he made an appearance. He did chemically okay. potion things. It was cool. Dude. Yeah, that's my extent uh, of his knowledge. Where do you say? Um, 
Next up, we have the uh, Empire Wolverines. This is the uh, the Mark token Wolverine, uh, or he chooses someone to be his Mark. So basically, what they were looking at was uh, if Wolverine's Mark is KO'd, you choose a different Mark, right? Or at the beginning of the game, not even. But at the beginning of the game, you give somebody choose someone to be Wolverine's Mark. Well, what if da 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 they get swapped out? They're not KO'd, so I can't choose a different Mark. So now it is at the beginning of your turn. If no opposing character on the map is Wolverine's Mark, you choose an opposing character to be Wolverine's Mark. So it still works the same way they wanted it to work with the whole, if someone's yeah. KO'd, you have to choose a new Mark. So that's, it just it just makes it way easier. Um, swapping is a pain in the butt and kind of a headache for everybody. So this just gets around that and it yeah. just makes the figure work exactly how it was intended to well, work. Well, this one's extremely clean as well because instead of, the only text that they really had to change was if Wolverine's mark is KO'd, choose a different opposing. But now it's just right. at the beginning of a turn, if no opposing character on the map is Wolverine's mark, choose an opposing character to be his mark. So the likelihood is you'll pick one and it'll stick for a while, like the majority of right. the game. But yeah, I really like this this new set of erratas. They just feel really clean, really smooth. Like they definitely change how the character is played. But as far as you know trying to remember how they're played they're very clean very like succinct oh yeah uh and then the last but definitely least i guess doesn't really matter um 051 house of x maggot the specific effect that was reviewed was but it's how i live i think it's like yeah, i know it's gross but it's how i live cuz he eats with his little maggots uh but um that trait is specifically the one that is free, remove an adjacent Eenie or Meenie bystander from the map if you do remove all that bystander's food tokens and give them Maggot. I feel like this trait, if they were going to specifically just change this, it would be either like a power action to remove them. Yeah. Or it would be they'd get away with or get rid of the remove them from the map and just free remove all of that bystander's food tokens and give them to Maggot. So you'd still be able to collect the food tokens, but you wouldn't be able to remove them from the map. Uh, that way your opponent could actually attack something that attacked them or damaged them. <laughs> that, those but, would have uh, been my changes. I they did not. A power yeah, the result was something. no change. Yeah. And I think that's fine. Yeah, you especially know, when I'm Red Ghost just 10 times so the bystander better, generator that Maggot will so ever much be. much better. Like, sleeping on Red Ghost. Y'all yeah. think Maggot's better than Red Ghost. Y'all are on that crank, bro. Just um, terrible. Terrible. Yeah. You're a bad person. Um, so anyways, those are the erratas of the changes. Let's go ahead, keeping it smooth and seamless here. Let's check out the Modern Age uh, legality list. So rotation happened as of July 1st. Oh, and by the way, really quickly, I guess I should... For those erratas, they go into effect July 11th. So five days from the time of this recording. So sometime in the future. Yeah. Um, it'll but be Canadian nationals. nationals. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I guess so maybe not. Before it will Canadian be before nationals. U.S. Nats. I think Canadian nationals. I don't remember if they agreed their changes. Um. And I don't know why the watch list said these go into effect after a certain date. I don't know why we wouldn't just say they go into effect immediately. We're not waiting for cards and to be printed go. or shipped out. Yeah. Right. Um, that's what my venue is doing. You know, Rainbow, they're just being like, all right, well, that's what the change is. That's how we're going to play it. And like, that makes sense to me. Um, so I feel a little bad, listener. I don't know if Canadian Nats is going to be going with these changes or not, but also very few of you are Canadian. <laughs> so it doesn't really affect uh, any of the majority of you guys. Sorry to the 20 Canadian listeners. But you guys probably know if they're legal or not for Canadian Nats because you're, well, you're you. You're Canadian. <laughs> um, so yeah, moving on to Modern Age Rotation. Ah, Simeon. It's always a sad time. Yeah, when rotation hits, it really. I feel is. like this is the this... saddest rotation, though. Like in a long time, yeah. this is the rotation that makes me probably the most sad. So we're saying say goodbye to a lot of stuff, man. The, th I, the biggest thing that we're saying goodbye to, in my opinion. So, for the longest time since I've been playing, for the longest time, uh, there was a stretch in like the 2015 kind of era, or no, it would have been. 
Oh, it was probably like the 2015 era where like people weren't really playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, but there was a stretch before we got to like Turtles and oh, sure. there just weren't any indie sets. And then like we got Turtles, we got Turtles 2, Turtles 3, Turtles 4. Like we just can't right. stop making these it was, like, Turtles. Was awesome. And then, you know, between Turtles 3 and Turtles 4, all of a sudden we got uh, Star Trek. Like the original series, yeah. we got actual figures. And then we got more Turtles, and then we got more Star Trek, and then we got, wow, by by the graces of the WizKid overlords, we got WWE. Oh, uh, yeah. And it's finally come time to say goodbye <sighs> to all of that. So, like, all the indie sets are officially rotated either into silver or golden at this point. Um, it's sad. And, man, yeah, it's, it's a rough pill to swallow because... Uh, it's, it used to be, I mean, and here's the thing with rotation. I've said this multiple times in the past. Really doesn't matter if you're a casual player. We play Golden Age, Silver Age, whatever hodgepodge right. garbage stuff. We just play with what we want to play. So, honestly, this isn't like a huge mark. Uh, but it is like a milestone for Heroclix in general. Like the first, going into the first modern age with no... Uh, in a long time, the first modern in a long time. Yeah, with no, no third no party. No third party. So besides, I guess Scott Porter in the spirit oh, of the true. game for third party, but no like third Scott party Porter. sets. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's it's oh, really I, crazy. I'd be me. remiss if I didn't mention that the Orville is also part of. Oh right, yeah, yeah, the uh, Orville's gone. So the actual rotation. Give us is, the uh, full rundown. Yeah, so this is going. Uh, they quite nicely gave us like an extra year with the rebirth because uh, just otherwise it would have like released only one DC set, I think. Uh, but so it'll be from rebirth, which was March of 2019 and then yeah. going up into JLU, which was May of 2020. That's all going to be gone this year. So, uh, so that is included in there is JLU Black Widow movie, uh, the Fantastic Four Cosmic Clash starter specifically, not the not any of the Fantastic Four sets, but the starter, Captain America yeah. and the Avengers main set and Fast Forces, um, the X Men, the very first X Men uh, deep cuts, it's like the unpainted. <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot about those. Yeah. Oh man. Really, the deep cuts are gone. That's deep, so sad. Well, at least the first portion of deep cuts. I think they released oh, sure. two, and I don't know if right, both of did. them are gone. Uh, but the WWE set, the entire set, the the starter, everything like that. Um, also, they did say the two convention exclusives, which is Ultimate Warrior <sighs> and John yeah. Cena, are also going. So both of those are lumped in, even though they weren't released until very recently. The Orville, which is an eight-figure starter, so... I don't think a lot of people had love for the Orville. I know a lot of people were into Dr. Claire Finn, but One not girl, so much yeah. the Orville. Uh, X-Men Dark Phoenix Saga, which feels like such a milestone set for some reason. Like That was the set yeah. that dropped at Worlds in 2019. It was this huge, big event. Like So many not, good times with uh, that set, man. It wasn't really oh. even the best set for Battle Royals, no, but was, I still... You know, it was still kind of... As far kind as of like, bad single base uh, figures go it's not even like in my top by like, uh, 20 probably. it's really rough um but and realistically still, any set that has two by twos in it is just a bad battle royal set um, yeah it was, it was such a still, cool set because it's like, nostalgic to sentinel me. stealth sentinel sentinel nimrod nimrod proteus exodus onslaught juggernaut yeah. like the two by two juggernaut just being a potential 300 point thing that you could face against you know, uh, Green Dragon Pot. Like every two by two had value to me. Um, obviously, there's some that were like overlooked, but man. And then the chase theme, even though it was kind of like lackluster sculpts, in my opinion, a solid working chase theme. Like before Secret Six, like years before Secret Six came out, two years, I think. Um, this was like a. a banger chase theme that you could actually yeah. run certain pieces with and like maybe multiples of certain ones and just really have good effects going on um but yeah x-men dark phoenix saga the fast forces which i loved the fast forces as well because everyone 
gave you something against giants and colossals. Yeah, so it was yeah, like yeah. built to fight the two by twos. Uh, so Wolverine was like combat reflexes. Rogue gave you toughness. Um, Beast gave you super senses. Storm gave you mystics. Gambit gave probability control and Jubilee gave shape change. So it was like, yeah, if you actually ever ran yeah. this against, I mean, really you could run this against like a, the 750 point Galactus and just have a real good time. You would have bided him. Yeah. It's like, would have absolutely well, here's my two rollouts, my toughness, my, you know, combat reflexes, my mystics, just like a ton of fun stuff. Um, one of the fast forces that I really made, made sure I picked up. Um, but then, anyhow, I'm going to speed through the rest of these because we're going to name off some characters anyhow. Yeah. Uh, Resistance is futile and to boldly go from the next generation, which also included uh, the fast forces, which fast forces was also really good. All the stat boosts they gave. Uh, Regenesis. Who doesn't remember the amazing Regenesis set? Which oh, man. With, like, color-coded... I remember- dials Wolverine color coded tiles so you could know if your uh if your opponent was lying about being a Jean Grey school for the learning or uh <laughs> if they were you know a utopia theme right. it's like well I'm X-Men Keep theme like yeah but you don't get that you don't get the team up card don't you dare uh ABPI wow like will they ever talk uh, ABPI about about time uh ABPI ABPI is one I'm really not sad to see go I'm not it's sad to like, see it uh, go and happy it's it's finally come time for it to go I will just Rest say like easy, old man. this set alone Third had time. multiple elements from it have their like huge time in the sun like there was the oh, Kobic yeah. trader like Yep. time in 2019 All the stuff uh, there was the power gem Wonder. after like the wonder woman 80th yeah. you know um all kinds of stuff from the set had like a ton of use yeah there was uh i mean even the craziest thing looking back is like how did uh gardener and uh astronomer have such like a hard oh yeah strong <laughs> like metal hold for so long because like looking at them, they're like they're both so just long. like elevens for three, Yikes. and it's like granted, you know, Power yeah. Gem, but yeah. Power Gem wasn't the same as Power Gem have now. No. So, yeah, ABPI is definitely one that I'm like, I'll miss it in the yeah. aspect of like what a well designed set, just awesome. It set. was incredible. Uh, and it then maybe obviously Rebirth being the last one. Rebirth, and- I will say, is like the. The one I'll miss the least. There's definitely yeah. some strong figures in it that I definitely built with all the time uh, when it first came out. That uh, what is it? The fifty point Nightwing. He's seventy five or fifty point Nightwing. Man, stacking like a bunch of those. You've got stealth. You've got Titans, and then he's got leadership. Free choose close combat expert, range combat expert, perplex or outwit. So like playing multiple Nightwings. Just gave you a ton of options. You could outwit, you could perplex, you could have ranged combat expert, multiple ca- characters. Um, but yeah, that was Rebirth was a great set for Titans fans. I will say it was kind of like a weird set for Justice League fans. But that's just how I felt yeah, about it. I mean, it was it was just such a bad. It was just such a bad set. It was so weird. It just yeah. felt so out of place, even when it came out like a set that could come out a few years ago like it felt old when it came out which is it did, know, not it great de- for definitely set. felt not of the like, time that it was released so like and yet like ironically it had like relatively newish stuff like batman who laughs and all like those chases you know oh, like it. design wise it was or like character you know, sculpts and design it was new it was like yeah. point values and uh like traits and like just some of the stuff that we got like because earth x was the like the last main set before that and earth x had you know equipments it had like a bunch of like oh true traits right and equipment stuff. title characters and uh um, all sorts Rebirth of stuff. just yeah Generic. it was missing most of that yeah um but man that's uh that's the full rundown that's what we're saying saying goodbye to i i feel Comfortable for modern is right now, like like what you said. I wish there's more DC. I wish there's more non Marvel, non DC stuff. It feels a little weird that like Fantastic Four is the oldest set. You know what I mean? 
Like it's still, I don't know that that whole 2020 is such a blur. Still feels like maybe uh, I don't know that that's newer than it actually is. But like, nah, it's uh, it's two years old at this point, so it's gonna feel really old next year. Um, so you know, swap. Cosmic Clash being gone. Uh, which Cosmic Clash obviously came out before like the first Fantastic Four set, but we knew right. we were getting a Fantastic Four set when Cosmic Clash came out. Yeah, um, and so it was super exciting when like that was announced. But I always like lump those two timeline wise. I lump those two into my head Together. at the same time, uh, yeah. and so it is funny that that is gone. But yeah, the the first Fantastic Four set, which still a real solid set in my opinion. Oh, really solid. Absolutely. I'm probably going to be trying to play a heck out of, uh, you know, Frightful 4 swap. Oh, yeah. I never really played that before. With um, that new, I think it's one uh, of the team of cards. It's actually crazy. That new, oh, yeah, absolutely. The Wizard, baby. Uh, him is such a cool team up card. Uh, playing more scrolls. Now that the scrolls have a ton of help from Empire and then Future Foundation, I do want to play way more scrolls teams. Uh, in the future, and then I still have yet to play the Earth X thing. But no matter what, he's gonna be playing oh. Golden Age like Earth X team. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I feel bad. I guess I played. I, mean, the, I, I got play... a Doctor Fantastic yeah. because like Doctor Fantastic was scientist and everything, so I, I played him a lot. The Earth X thing was just Earth X and F four, and it, it felt weird playing him F four because like that's not he wasn't a member of the Fantastic Four and Earth X, you know. Yeah, and Earth I started X, dude. playing the like the Fantastic Four swap as soon as that set dropped. So, like, my first Fantastic Four swap was quite literally just characters from the Fantastic Four, like, the first set. Well, right. I mean, that was uh, everybody's, or the majority of Yeah. And it was, in my opinion, it was really solid. Like, I still, when I go back to, like, build from it, it's that Earth-X thing. It's potentially Black Leopard. It's a lot of, like, really good stuff from there. Um, Even, like, Agent Venom passing out Shape Change, the Wolverine from there, um... If he hits, I think he hands out charge. Is that what it is? Uh, hits with a close attack, they can use flurry. Oh, his hands out flurry. Uh, and then, of course, I mean, the Franklin Richards. Uh, the rare Franklin Richards really brings Fantastic Four together. Uh, um, yeah, I had no arguments there. <laughs> but no, uh, that's still modern, so we don't need to discuss that anymore. Very right? true. We don't yeah. have to discuss it. Um, and so what? Like, what's a... It's like as a question to answer it first, uh, what's a figure I'm gonna miss the most? You know, the figure I probably am gonna miss the most is Josiah X. It's gonna feel weird yeah. not building with him. I loved reducing penetrating damage. I really liked putting him on a lot of teams, and so many teams naturally he just went on. Oh yeah. Uh, maybe him in a combination good. of like Steve Rogers, I'm gonna miss. Especially with like Avengers swap being a thing, I feel like it's really sad seeing Steve Rogers go when you can make someone an Avenger and then swap him out. Uh, so I don't know if that's the set I'll miss the most, but those are probably the figures I'll miss the most. What figures are you gonna miss the most, Simeon? Uh, so from the same set, uh, I'm gonna really miss new clones. I didn't, uh, yeah, I didn't run these guys nearly enough, but the Power Elite trait was really cool. And even without that, the burnout virus potentially setting off a bunch of new clones at once and just doing like one unavoidable because it wasn't pen damage; it was unavoidable. And right, uh, that was just pretty nuts. So, yeah, that was something. Or wait, no, it, it was one pen damage to each character within three squares, and then uh, you deal new clones one unavoidable. So, yeah, it was pen damage that you're dealing to people within three. Um, but no, like they similar to Anarchy bombs, just having some new clones on the map made people like kind of second guess where they were going to position and stuff, and that was really fun for me. Uh, yeah, having teams that are designed to score your opponent a ton of points, but t- potentially deal them a bunch of damage is really fun to me. Uh, and so being able to build around that was just something that I'm going to miss. Yeah. Um. So then for set. That I'll probably miss most. It is going to be WWE. I don't. I don't know if it could be anything else but WWE. Knowing that like there is no wave two, um, getting the early rotate, and I guess with WWE, I'm going to lump in like Ultimate Warrior and John Cena. Um, right. Number one, good night, sweet prince. Too too soon, Ultimate Warrior and John John Cena, especially too soon. 
like Ultimate Warrior was a figure when he came out, like that you know reinvigorated my love uh, for WWE. Oh, and we like, were so hopeful for, for that. Hot we, we, got so oh, we got so hyped. Oh, we got so hyped. Second, where it was like, we like way two is confirmed gone. now. <laughs> like yeah, they were like yeah, Ultimate Warrior got released. He's zero zero two. That means like you know uh, there's still a chance. Uh, Only for us to realize shortly thereafter that uh, no, they just already had these designed and had to move them before. They get rid of them. Um, which I'm still like I'm very grateful that they got I'm glad them we out got there. Them. Yeah. yeah, because it man, is. this like both of these had well was Ultimate Warrior wasn't pro mode. I don't think I don't think we had ever seen his sculpt. But that John Cena, seen we had them. definitely seen crazy. his sculpt. And yeah. I, how sad I would have been if we just never got to see like the dial. Like even right. even though I still You're don't own real one deep right now, Simeon. I, I'm just like, man, so Sorry, glad we got say, to at least see uh, the dial. Like, I figure who we wish we would have seen the dial for. Uh, Sting, hello, big yeah. Sting fan here. That cuts so deep. I, every night I go to sleep and I think, man. After putting <sighs> on your uh, your Stinger all, face paint, I lay Stinger down, face, paint face down in the pillow to, every night. to leave like a perfect imprint so you can wake up in the middle of the night and have a hallucination that he's staring back at you. Yeah, that me and Sting Speak are to roommates. me, spirit Sting. <laughs> what would your dial have been like? Called her I'm just a pillow, and you're imagining it's yeah. <laughs> I want, I want you to beat Triple H and Hero Clicks. I want to, I want to right the wrongs of real life. Uh oh, um, man. wait, yeah, we don't need to pine over Wave Two too yeah, much because I've not, already let's not worry about it. But man, having Even like a more Bret Hart that I could have fought like uh, Shawn Michaels with fights would have been uh, that would have been really cool. Uh, uh, obviously, yeah, man. my. My biggest thing, it's the latest um latest like indie set that was released, which is WWE. And yeah. uh, that's the that's the one that like I just I I loved Trek. There's a lot of stuff from Trek that I played a ton of and uh I don't think I know anyone that bought more actual like single gravity feeds and like full gravity feeds than I did of Trek. And I'm sad that like we probably won't see any more Trek either. But man, WWE yeah. had a special place when it was released, and I was just like, "Oh man!" I mean, we did like a whole like Extreme yeah. Rules. We did extreme that whole, rules. That Extreme yeah. Rules was on like the okay. the one year anniversary of WWE exactly. yeah. being released, which makes it two years old from that video At this point, because WWE is almost three years old. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that was that was a huge part of not just the podcast, but also like our YouTube when we started doing right. like bigger videos and stuff. So WWE will always have a special like set place in, in my hero clicks history. But, um, yeah. Um, looking at all the sets that have now been rotated, which, uh, elements, game design, whatever that was like kind of exclusive to these sets, you know, like XDPS two by twos, um, assist, the whole colored bases, the specific gravity feed, uh, ABPI. I mean, I, that's just kind of really just objects, but still, how well it did it you know um captain america had like a ton of shared traits for you know avengers for thunderbolts master of evil oh, for yeah. shield you know uh just black the, widow was huge in shifting focus justice League trait, was huge yeah. in espionage, espionage. Yeah. yeah what's like trait. going forward like do you want any future sets to like take from these past sets you know that, like we just don't have because like in modern we don't have a uh Oh, for Genesis, we don't have a JLU type set with the crazy sideline stuff, which maybe it's good we don't. I don't know. Yeah. And we don't have a two by two set. You know, we're missing a ton of that stuff. Um, I like personally, I really want like sometime in modern a future two by two set because now it's, you know, we went through that that time in Hero Clicks after like the Mighty Thor came out. Tons of two by twos on every team, you know, two or three on every team almost. It felt like. Um, especially with whales after AI came out even more two by twos. Right. So, and now it feels like there's going to be one or two, there's maybe, you know, what? Fulcum, Fulcum and Galactus. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, he's like a, a three by six, but yeah, right. You're not, gonna, he's not, you're not going to make Yeah, He's not actually on like the table. Most of the main time. forest. Yeah. Um, so is... it's going to be, uh, feel very weird for the first time in a long time. Kind of like what you said about, uh, independent sets, like, no big colossal figures, not a lot, anyways. Is on the Ghost board. Rider it's still so going to be there? Oh, you know, I didn't check Ghost Rider. See, Let me look. Tri Sentinel came out and. Okay, there's Master Mold, so he'll be there. 
I'm looking at like the legal list. <sighs> Ghost Rider is not legal, dude. Yeah. So it's like Galactus, so... Master Mold, and Fulco Abdominus. Abominus yeah. here are like the the only big figures we got. Wow. Uh, so that no, means no, I our mean new... I guess this other than like the legacy card two by twos. But... Oh right, legacy card but stuff. That's sure. true. That is true. Um, other so than, now yeah, so Surter, the, uh, the oldest Ymir. set is uh, Battlegrounds Avengers versus Massive Evil, which I love. I'm really thankful that's not gone yet. I have played uh, the heck out of just Captain America from that, but he's still awesome. The oldest big booster set is F Fantastic Four. Then we got Spider Man and Venom. We have X Men House of X. We got Fantastic Four Deep Cuts. We got Future Foundation. We have Wonder Woman 80th, Rise and Fall, Eternals again. Uh, Avengers Fantastic Four Empire, Avengers War of the Realms, and Marvel Studios Disney Plus. That is our current legal list. It feels like we have technically uh, I don't know F4 very little storyline as well, which oh, only yeah. added added Go four f- no six repainted characters, but also right. added team up cards and a bunch of legacy cards, notably pretty big stuff in there. Um, yeah, yeah, we have X of Swords coming out, which will not. So really, X Men only lost the two by twos and the, like the cables and stuff like that from animated series. Um, but more so than that, like Robot lost all of the uh, Danger Room constructs except the new ones. So to play a full Danger Room team, you'll have to be in silver, which is fine. I mean, again, it's not like Mar or it's not like modern is. Uh, the only thing that you can play obviously if you're playing casually you can play however you like you can just make up the rules as you go with these fun dials that like i don't know what this power does but i'm gonna say it does this you can do whatever you want right whiz kids will not kick down your door and take your figures away from you i've checked i've played in the worst possible kind of rules situations and believe <laughs> you me uh lucas tom van Halen still has all of his figures they didn't kick down his door so um <laughs> no uh yeah there's it's a it's sad it really it is, is. It is but more it so because it's like the end of an era I'm and less of prepared. i won't be able to play these it's not like i won't be able to play these figures anymore it's like it's the end of an era for some of these sets really you is. know and uh like at this point we don't know if we'll get another two by two uh main set because those are like AI and XDPS, those were really cool. Maybe they'll go back to super boosters. Maybe that sells easier, or maybe that's easier to only do like eight figures instead of primes and uh, a full set list of just dang, how many two by twos were there? Twenty five plus. Launched. Yeah. Ooh. Three primes. Yeah. Yes. Three yeah, they're three primes. Yeah, because yeah. they don't do the common. So yeah, it be stuck. Yeah, man. No, there was four. There was four primes. There's mimic as a prime. Oh no, I was talking yeah, about just the two by twos. But yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, two oh by you're twos, talking. Yeah, you're talking yeah, yeah. two primes. Morph. Uh, there, but there were there were still. Not, oh yeah, morph. Were there not three primes? Was it's there not just was there time. was there not a rare prime? There was. There was three primes. There was super rare, rare, and then I come. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three. You said three. I don't know what I'm doing. Ignore <laughs> what I just said. I don't know why. In my brain, I had to like recount everything. Forget about it. Forget it's about it. Time. It's more than time. Time to impersonate Dang, trickster. We thought you were dead. You know all the Morbin things. Classic Morbin stuff, dude. Twenty five points for old Morb. Uh, yeah, it is sad. It was sad when AI went because AI had a huge list of two by twos and even like not the two by twos, uh, solid, uh, what would you call it? Um, mini what? set, uh, the keyword what thing. What do you mean? What do you mean, Simeon? AI had, the, had like the what space night sub theme. What? Sub-theme. What? Oh, sure. There you go. Yeah. It had a really cool sub theme. Um, and I mean, XDPS basically had X Men Brotherhood. Uh, Friends of Humanity, whatever they were, Sentinel kind of sub theme, but no, uh, losing like all those two by twos, it does like, I don't know, it just means they're going to show up on the tables a lot less. Like obviously, when Avengers yeah. Infinity rotated, even though my venues mostly just play casual, whatever you want to play, I stopped seeing like the two by two, Jakar, Nebula, the two by two Thanos. Um, infinity eternity like some of these are you only played at like top dial kind of stuff or like really high point cost but even just like hulk uh playing that two by two hulk at 150 was cool 
and uh, there's plenty of lower point stuff in the X-Men Phoenix Saga. And I just, yeah, I hope more casual venues realize you can always just keep playing that stuff. It's not a problem unless your venue specifically says modern this week. Um, bust out that Stealth Sentinel. Bust out the, you know, bust out that Stealth Sentinel so that I can tombstone pile drive it and then pin it because it's on a blue click. How about that? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Or you fixed it, Simeon. You did it. You solved yeah. it. Um, all right. That is that is the modern age uh, rotation. That's the list, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, wow, wow. 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 Uh, no, it, it is huge. It happens every year, and I'm never prepared for it. And I'm always mad at myself for not playing more of the stuff that was about to rotate. So now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be that guy next year. I'm gonna play the heck out of Spider Man stuff and my Fantastic Four stuff. I don't feel like FFF will rotate, but it, it sure might. So and oof, Future Foundation. Thinking about that rotating, that seems wild. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and jump into oh boy, wow, some listener question. There are dozens of us. Uh, so we don't actually have a ton of listener questions this week. Just really just one from uh, Malcolm Rush here, which is a continuation of last week's, which is choose a figure that is like iconic or comes to mind for each standard power. So Simi and I are now doing the attack powers. Uh, first up is Blades, Claws, Fangs. Simeon, I feel like I know who you're going to say, but why don't you tell me who you chose? Mm, do you? Fangs. I have a pretty Ooh. good hunch. Who could decent. it be? Uh, <laughs> so specifically, I'm going. I'm going specifics on all of these. Um, the figure that brings blades, claws, fangs to mind for me is the X Men Xavier School Super Rare Wolverine. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I knew full it. dial I of knew blades. It. Uh, I mean, depending on where he's at on the map, it's also flurry. Uh, or combat reflexes. I mean, you guys all know what he does. He's either 150 or 50 points. But uh, what an amazing sculpt. If I wanted like a better sculpt to exemplify, I'm bladesing you. I'm about to blades you. I don't know what I would use. Maybe like, uh, what's her name? Shiva? Is that the one that's got like the katana? That's uh, Or maybe it's katana. Um from Joker's Wild. I don't know, uh, Pat. Uh, I'm the Bruce. You tell me. I almost called you Batman. Oh, whoa. Uh, let's see. No, Lady Sheev is the one doing the kick. I can't remember. There's one with like a sword with an effect. But no, like this Wolverine's just, it's a full dial of blades. It's instantly the one I think of. He's got a big old claw effect. He looks like he's coming out of, like straight out of like Marvel vs. Capcom 3 kind of thing. Um, amazing sculpt. And yeah. Always rolling the blades when I um, play him. Yeah, I chose the exact same figure. I knew Simeon was going to pick it, but it was also the very first specific version of a character that came to mind when I thought of Blades Class Fangs was the XXS Super Rare Wolverine. Uh, Simeon, next up is Energy Explosion. This one I don't know who you picked for, I will say. Yeah, this um, one... Who'd you pick? I feel like this one's kind of a cop-out because he doesn't have Energy Explosion top dial. He does get it, oh. though. But oh. as far as thinking about Energy Explosion goes... I almost went with Blue Union Jack from Earth X. Ooh, um, okay. Because he has that, like, that's the one that has the three damage energy explosion, and I played the heck out of that guy. But I actually went with the ADW009 Shifting Focus Punisher. So uh, he starts with a rocket propelled grenade, which is right. not energy explosion. It's uh, when he hits a single opposing character with a range attack, instead of dealing normal damage, Deal the target four damage and deal each character adjacent to the target three damage. Um, he's not targeting the like other characters that are adjacent, so it gets around like a lot of stuff, but um, or gets around some stuff. But yeah, it's a it's a four damage energy explosion to the main target and then three to the rest. But uh, he does get regular energy explosion down dial. It's just a very iconic Punisher when I think of energy explosion. I tend to think of people that use like grenades and yeah. big old rocket launchers. So I also chose a Punisher. However, uh, that one wasn't the first one that came to mind. I instead thought of the Deadpool Punisher from 2014. He does have a special attack, which is a grenade. 
uh, which is Energy Explosion. When he does and targets only one character, damage dealt is penetrating damage. Uh, oh. Just really cool. He was also the first character who was really ahead of the time. So he could use ranged combat expert as a ranged combat action instead of as a power action. Yeah. So he was a 11th for 3. Uh, for a 100 point figure, man, this is a figure I would kill if they legacy carded. I love this Punisher so much. He had the whole guilty must be punished trait. But yeah, uh, for energy explosion purposes, he was the first person out of. Yeah. That's a uh, pen penetrating energy explosion. Pretty solid. Next up is Pulse Wave, Simeon. This one was hard because like there's there's a lot of characters that come to mind that do like an air of the effect. The first thing I the first thing I thought of where I was like, oh yeah, that person definitely like enter, or uh, that person definitely uh, like pulse waves, like a literal wave that is pulsing uh, was like Banshee when he like screams. Uh, but I went with uh, from Rebirth the Super Rare Starfire. Because okay, a yeah, very solid, all right. a very solid pulse wave figure. And as far as like figures that I go to when I'm specifically thinking of pulse wave, it's definitely like the top like two. Uh, the next up would be like Songbird from Captain America. But um, this is like the very first one that I usually think of. Is her pulse wave is hard to deal with a lot of times. Yeah, she was tough. Um. I like that we both shifted here. We both chose a DC figure uh, for Pulse Wave. I did choose someone a little bit older uh, from Superman and the Legion of Superheroes. I chose Validus. Now, oh. he doesn't always uh, have Pulse Wave, but he's got this special thing, right? So at the beginning of your turn, you roll a D6. On the results of a 4 through 6, so a 50-50, you can immediately use Pulse Wave as a free action. They locked damage value of 2, and he ignores friendly characters. It was yeah. disgusting. Uh, Validus is super gross, and I do remember losing to him quite a bit. I had a friend who would play him, and it it sucked. What can Shout I say? Shout out to a Validus few other tough. Pulse Wave figures. Uh, Exodia, most oh, of the yeah. Black Bolts, sure. the Nova Blast, Johnny uh, Blaze, or not Johnny Blaze, geez. Uh, right, Fantastic Storm. Four, Johnny Storm. Oh, four, yeah. Uh, the, no, yeah. There's a lot of like really solid Pulse Wave pieces that have been made throughout the years. Uh, who's uh, the no one? The new one, the Stellarax, like the person. Oh, Stellarax, can... sure. Yeah, the, the Isaac bystander. Herald. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm thinking. Like... I'm thinking of the Herald from uh, one of the Fantastic Four sets. The like. Oh, Terax. Rare. No. Terax can't do it no, though. It's no. uh, it's what's her face? Stardust. He pulls waves. Is that what her name is? Yeah, yeah Stardust. Yeah. Stardust. Wow. And then she talks everybody into that one square that she pulls waves from. A That's a really off. cool pulse wave power. Um, someone with a similar power like that to me that I always liked with Pulse Wave was uh, Star Lord from the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie starter set. He could Pulse Wave from a square, which was really really cool. Uh, once per game, there's a once per game Pulse Wave. It was really cool. Um, I enjoyed that and some other stuff. Uh, next up is Quake. I feel like Calder won't won't have any clue what I picked for this one. I, uh, I have a pretty good guess. Is it Quake? No. No, oh, that man. was that was the joke I was gonna go with. Uh, I was like, "Quake" comes to mind when I think of Quake. Uh, no, so like for this one, I was like, it was hard because it's like the whole quakes, but that's not really what the Hulk does. The Hulk like leaps around and he's super strong. He's not really like, I mean, he does cause like quakes, ground smash, and, and then like, who who else would have caused like physical quakes just by moving? So I went with Andre the Giant. Oh man, who not okay. only has top dial quake. Um, yeah, but yeah, he was like a literal giant that would make like the ring shake and stuff, you know. True, 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 true. Very nice. I uh, I do think that they didn't give a lot of quake out WWE no. today. Not like without I... it being some sort of. So yeah, like their big thing was uh, stun and slam, and that's I mean yeah, that's his signature is uh, slam, and then he can choose both options. Um, but no, there's not a ton of quake in the WWE oh. set, like. Not printed, at least. Um, so what I went for, despite Simeon's best wishes, and I did actually have the Quake from Captain America on here. I was like, man, it would be so fitting. But, nah, it's the Mighty Thor starter Hulk, you know? like, Oh, yeah. You know, like, dude, Quaking is all he does, you know? Yeah, it's all awesome. teams he built around his Quake, yeah. Quakes, yeah, no, and I, you know, I ran a Korath Hulk Quake team once, too. You know, I was a scumbag at one point in time. Um, and it's like, yeah, dude, I love that Hulk. And Quaking's what he does, man. Quaker, what can I say? 
Uh, next up is super strength. All right. So I did go with a Hulk for super strength. Uh, I went with That's the fair. War of the Realms She-Hulk, who has super oh. strength or whole dial, a whole dial of charge, a whole dial of impervious, a whole dial of close combat expert. But I mostly went with this one because she's got Megan Jord, the belt of strength. And most of the time, even like Thors that we get don't have references to the belt of strength. So I just thought it was really cool that not only is it She-Hulk, but also she's got the belt of strength. I just thought that was really fun. It is pretty awesome, um, yeah. And she's got like the the like big like wrestler kind of energy looking thing, so I just think it was like a a cool unique f- take on a figure that's already really strong. Okay, uh, the first character that came to mind for super strength, and this is a DC character, believe it or not, um, but it was Batman. Uh, I know you're thinking like that's the DC character with super strength that you think of. This is specifically uh, Ape Batman, who has traded super strength sidestep. Uh, which traditionally was just used. He's a 15-point character, and people put him on their team just so they could equip a, like, 10-point heavy object, usually, like, Mjolnir or something. Um, but, yeah, that's that's what I think of when I think Super Strength, I guess. It was instantly, my mind went to old 8 Batman here and how he was, like, the only guy that could help you, uh, help you equip those heavy objects turn one with Super Strength sidestep. Um, next up is Smoke Cloud, a toughie, a toughie for sure. Simeon, who you who you pick for Smoke Cloud? Smoke Cloud, dang, I feel like I kind of had to cop out on this one and just go with Batman. Yeah. So specifically, uh, I'll I was gonna go with Batman. I guess uh, I specifically went with the Bat Cycle, which is a Batman okay. family. Um, does have smoke cloud as free, but only to generate markers in the bat- the squares that the bat cycle moved through this turn, which I always thought was funny, like as if it's like breaking down and just like clouds of smoke are puffing out behind it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like any Batman basically has like you know built in stealth, built in like some sort of smoke cloud kind of thing sometimes. But yeah, that was the first one I thought of. Yeah. Um, I also went with Batman after searching Batman to find eight Batman. I just kind of kept scrolling. So I was like, ah, oh, Smoke Cloud's next. Let's see, uh, who can I choose here? I remember there being a cool Batman that could, like, move himself for free in Smoke. And I finally found it. It was DC 75th Anniversary Batman has Smoke Cloud top dial. And actually, now that I'm looking at this Batman, yo, he's pretty decent for 77 points, you know, decent, you know, slash bad, but I mean, legacy card, I would, I, I could, I would say pick up this Batman, um, cause he has special damage power that just gives him the flight ability, which is like kind of good. And yet they could so make that do way more stuff with a, with a legacy card, but he has a special attack power first, first four clicks once at the beginning of your turn. If Batman has no action tokens, he can use smoke cloud as a free action. If he does and places at least four hindering train markers, he and one friendly character named Robin can move up to two squares. That's so cool that he, he just. So to me, this like fits Batman. It's the drops of smoke and then poof, he like moves right. So that's uh that's the vibe I was getting with this Batman. And I was like, cool, what an awesome Batman. I kind of want to buy one now. Just like seeing like how like cool his dial is and how decent it is. Like this would be such a good legacy card pick. DC Wiz Kids, listen to me now. Um, <laughs> next up is Incapacitate. Yeah. So this is one that I, yeah. when I was picking it, I was like, I just had, I had the same exact feeling that you did where I was looking at it and I was like, never looked at this character before. So when I thought of incapacitate, I thought of Mr. Freeze. I'll, I'll start there. And so I typed in Mr. Freeze because the, the most recent one that I could think of was like the Batman animated ones, which I wasn't fully in love with. But this Mr. Freeze from the, uh, the TV uh, what was it like the 60th? Okay, okay, 1960s. 1960s. He's got a big Batman. old like cloud behind him that goes foosh. Okay, okay. Uh, listen to this though. No ordinary guns, please. Mister Freeze and other other friendly characters within four squares can use incapacitate and have a minimum range value of four. <laughs> so not only does he have incapacitate, but everyone that's friendly to him gets incapacitate within four. All characters within four squares can't make ranged attacks unless they use incapacitate. Now, I think a couple of figures that might work really well with this, 
And the first that comes to mind is that new super rare Deadpool that gives people um, the good old... Oh, yeah. Yeah, like a swim symbol. So all characters within four squares can't make ranged attacks unless they use incapacitate. So that includes uh, characters that are trying to like running shot into that four square zone. Uh, this power can't be countered or ignored, which is protected outwit and safeguard outwit nowadays. Or maybe pulse wave, I guess. I can't remember exactly what countered and ignored mean back in the day. Yeah, ignored would be pulse wave, so yeah. Yeah, this is a real old figure. He's got the uh, death trap ability kind of trait thing that they all had. Uh, he also has a special damage power that is when he uses incapacitate and hits... After actions resolve, place a Fwoosh token on this card. When he uses Incapacitate and hits, hit characters are dealt damage equal to the number of Fwoosh tokens. So his damage just keeps going up. You never It never says to remove them. So as long as he can keep hitting, which he didn't have in Dom back in the day, but now everyone doesn't take pushing damage. So right. no, this is a figure that I'm definitely going to pick up because uh, I'm thinking of like a captain principled team with like him and Deadpool and just like some random hodgepodge stuff. Okay. Do you know it's what fun. his, do you know what his keyword is though? Calder His it's one Gotham keyword. city underworld or whatever, right? It's United underworld. Oh, United underworld. Excuse I didn't know me. that was a keyword. Yeah. I, I think it's specific it to just... that set. And oh, I guess there's, there's two characters from Harley Quinn and the Gotham girls that uh, go. got that. Keyword, thrill but killer. Otherwise it's, no, it's Doctor Harley Quinn, Doctor Holly Quinn, excuse me, and oh, okay, uh, sure. the Harlequin, which I think they like, took their design from like older versions of Harley or something. I don't really know, or retroactive older versions. But yeah, no, this his yeah, sculpt okay. is really cool, really dynamic. He's only a rare from I think a gravity feed. Okay, um, okay. But yeah, forcing your opponent to have incapacitate. I mean, technically forcing your friendly characters to have incapacitate. As but well, uh, yeah. it is just a really interesting team that you could build um, out of this guy. <laughs> my incapacitate pick. I used to build around incapacitate a ton, uh, especially when there was the title principled Captain America. I his whole thing was like he used incapacitate and attack. You just remove a token, which is really cool. Keep your team moving. Keep the other team tokened up. So I was like, well, I need to be able to do damage when I do incapacitate. Uh, so. Honestly, my first thought went to Supergiant when I was doing this, because I still love playing him with Supergiant. Um, but now it's Black Lightning. Uh, I did play this team a lot with Black Lightning. Man, I want Black Lightning to get a Legacy card so bad. So he's only 45 points, or 50, or something cheaper than 75. Um, but he has Arc Lightning for his special attack power, which he can use Incapacitate with three targets. When he does, after actions resolve, each hit character is dealt one penetrating damage, which is so gross. I love it so much. He had enhancement. He had running shot willpower. He had outsiders. I really loved playing this version of Black Lightning. He had a cool afro. This is the uh, the Joker's wild old Jefferson Pierce here. So, yeah, I um, Black Lightning is my incapacitate pick. And I, oh, man, I so love playing him, like, a ton. All right, moving forward, we have Penetrating Psychic Blast. Yeah, for this one, I just thought of, like, I don't know. I, I was thinking of, like, people with big, crazy guns, so kind of thought of like the the nick fury watcher um like dead shot that kind of stuff but then i was like you know who had some crazy big guns back in the 90s uh cable so <laughs> i went with the deadpool and the x-force common 014 cable uh he starts off with psychic blast but um he's it's an 11 for four which when this figure came out he was 120 points definitely not worth 120 points now no. but uh as far as power commons go Hitting your opponent for 11 for 4 and uh, having a prob on it was kind of crazy. And it just felt like really big gun cable like to me. Like, he always does Rob Lay followed like, Life Field, whatever. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The cover art was always just, like, cable with this gun that was, like, impossibly huge and overcomplicated to the point where it was, like, if you accidentally snagged a wire on something, it, all of a sudden it doesn't work anymore. But... That's what I think of it's when arch. it comes to penetrating psychic blast, like just a gun that can take out like a bunker. Fair enough. Um, I guess I think of very thin arrows hitting you, because uh, I instantly thought of like Hawkeye, and then I instantly thought of the version of Hawkeye that was used a lot with the Hawkeye ID card. 
back when, you know, Quinjet times, whatever. Oh, it was yeah. the only, I believe, the only penetrating Psychic Blast figure that had two bolts at the time uh, of, like, the Quinjet and all that jazz. So this is the Avengers Age of Ultron uh, starter set Hawkeye. So he had, like, traded running shot. He just had just plain old penetrating Psychic Blast, nothing crazy. Um, but, like, the stealth, penetrating Psychic Blast... Um, he later got like range combat expert. He did later get uh, energy explosion, which is kind of cool. Um, but he also had improved targeting ignores characters, which was big. Uh, your, your goal was to kind of counter the Quinjet because you needed to kill both. It was typically only two, I guess, back in this time. Uh, Ultron drones that they would use to call in stuff, right? Because Ultron drones were worth 120 points for every other game effect, you know? So you wanted to kill both of them. I don't know. I guess people just always use an enhancement or perplexed up this Hawkeye's damage, because he has a three damage. He definitely needs to deal at least four to take out both the Ultron drones. Uh, so that I don't necessarily remember. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah, perplexing up damage. Ha ha. Ha So <laughs> funny. To to well, so yeah. wacky. Ha. Definitely didn't just do that last night and cheat. No. I, I have never perplexed since the change. I promise. Scout's honor. Uh, next up is Precision Strike. Another fun, shooty, 2D power. Yeah, so for the longest time, Precision Strike was always attached to, like, the speedsters. It was like, these are the only powers that combo with hypersonic. Precision Strike, prob, that's it. Um, but, yeah. I mean, Precision yeah. Strike's definitely still got its place, and it's just kind of like a niche thing. So what I think of, like, obviously I think of, like, someone that's martial artist kind of thing. Like, they're precisely striking and like this could be you could do like bullseye and like you could do like a lot of range combat pieces as well but uh i went with karnak the inhuman who okay. finds like weaknesses in everything uh, his special damage power is literally in everything a weakness it's like sure karnak uh but he has a full dial of precision strike this is the one from the fantastic four set and uh yeah like that's when i think of like what? really solid martial artists I always think of him, um, not necessarily like the top martial artist in Marvel, no. but uh, no. definitely like in like, no, Simeon, the realm. I gotta say, what is up with you being like, yeah, you could choose this person, I guess. Like you did that with, with Quake for Hulk. And then now I did choose a bullseye. So thank you very much for choosing the one figure <laughs> yeah. that I chose. Like, I guess you could choose bullseye. Well, you said rangy um, something, something. You said yeah, you, you alluded you to knew. it. And I was like, this, yeah, you this fool probably picked bullseye. Bullseye. What an idiot. Uh, yeah, I picked bullseye. I picked bullseye from the Deadpool set. He's the second figure from the Deadpool set on here. Cause the Deadpool set's freaking awesome. It is. Uh, just eight range, triple target, just strike 12 attack, man, for 110 points. Used to, and I would play this guy. Uh, running shot, 12 attack, 17 defense with combat reflexes, 3 damage prop. That was it. <laughs> Yikes. In 6 clicks of life, he would get bodied uh, in any tournament nowadays. But improved targeting, hindering terrain, characters, and he can make a ranged combat attack against any opposing character in range and line of fire, even if that character in adjacent square, a.k.a. double circle arrow. Really solid. Really cool. I loved playing this bullseye. I liked the idea of, like, uh, there's a scene, I don't know if this is actually in Daredevil Season 3, or if it was like a comic book, but Bullseye throws, I think it's a comic book, he throws a glass bottle, and the pieces from that glass bottle all shatter and like hit like three or four people, and it's like, how could you have known? How could you have been so incredibly precise to throw something that then breaks, and then those pieces also somehow, like they wouldn't have kept the same velocity, obviously, traveling, but they did, uh, which is hilarious. And they stabbed into people. It was awesome. But yeah, Bullseye, Precision Strike. Makes sense. He's a rangy guy. Uh, I've never read all right. Thunderbolt stuff, but I really should I go back and like read through some Thunderbolts when he was pretending to be Hawkeye or whatever he was doing. Oh, yeah. He did do that, didn't he? What a, what a like wacky Dark Rain. Dark Rain? Yeah. That Dark Avengers thing, though. Not Thunderbolts, right? Dark Rain? Well, I mean, yeah. Or is that Thunderbolts? Is it both? He's, he's got... So the the one that you're talking about, has both both Dark Avengers and yeah. Avengers. So I don't know, but honestly, like I remember reading Dark Reign. I don't remember him being like super important in it, um, but I want to read like more stuff from around that era where he might have done like more stuff as Hawkeye or something. I don't know. Next up is Poison. I'm not going to say anything about this power. 
might get made fun of for who I choose. So poison is the next figure or next uh, power we're yeah. going to go over. Um, this was one that I specifically picked. The hero clicks, not just like a character. All of them so far. Let me say that, like everyone so far, I've thought of the character in the like, comics or media first, and then I thought of like the character that like the version of that that has like the power that like works the best that I've played or played around with. Okay. Um, this is one that I specifically thought of, like the Hero Clicks figure. So Poison uh, came down to it was just Man Thing, the Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, he technically has a special Poison. It's uh, he can use Poison when he does. Instead of dealing normal damage, you roll a D6 that can't be rerolled for each adjacent opposing character. On a result of a one through three, you deal them one. On a result of four through five, you deal them two. And on a six, you deal them three. Man, this guy's got. Back in the day, he had such a beefy dial. Uh, he had phasing teleport, yeah. carry ability, um, and then he had the special poison. And like his late dial, he still has poison. It's just normal. And his whole dial, he's just like a menace because if you, you know, you might like hit him a few times and he still has this power. And then he rolls a six and he deals you three poison damage. So it's like. Right. That gets through all of the reducers for the most part. And uh, if you also pack like an outwit or something on the team, then it's just dealing three whole damage. Or, you know, at the very least, on a 50-50, it was two damage. And at the worst, yeah. it was just normal poison. So uh, this was a great figure that I, I loved playing him. Also has the Mystics team ability. So always dealing damage one way or another. So I I had to hold it in because I was losing it when you said man because that is the exact character I also chose so we are two for two this episode on wow. choosing the exact same version of a character um, and then three for three for choosing the same character for a slot but yeah I also chose this man thing for all the reasons you said um, man thing has been a character I always like was because I was cool and then his whole thing is whatever knows fear burns at the man things touch and like yeah. poison was a cool power form I always when I think of poison I think to this guy you know, I mean, shout out to, I guess, like the Red Lantern ring coming in a close oh, sure. second uh, for like poison. But the like, yeah, ADW dude, man I thing also it. has Hilarious. poison, but he hits a stop click and gets like psychic blast. Yeah, so, I, I clicked on that one first and I was like, nah, this ain't it. Yeah. This ain't it. Yeah. They're both um, cool, but for different reasons. And this one specifically yeah. poison. Yeah. Next up is Steel Energy. This definitely felt like, obviously Simeon gets the first pick, but I will say one thing. This definitely felt like it fell into a certain category of characters. Yeah. A lot of characters get this in some aspect. Um, right. I think the most recent one that comes to mind is like Omega Red, which definitely oh, yeah. makes sense for his character. Uh, but the figure that I've played the most that has Steel Energy is Dracula from Fear Itself. So... He begins the game on click four. He's a vampire dial, obviously, Dracula, uh, or right. Alucard, if you like reading things backwards. Um, has steel energy, and he can heal past his starting line. So, like, other things like this are, like, Wendigos and, like, stuff like that. But uh, specifically, like, when I think of steel energy, I think of not necessarily, like, bottom dial healing back up. I think of somebody that just, like, always has it. And I really like characters like this because it gets around mystics nowadays where it's, like, Oh, I would take damage. So that's uh, specifically uh, last Friday when I was playing my Eddie Guerrero with the blood axe. Oh, yeah. Being able to tank Mystic's damage with Eddie, not only with Exploit and Battle Fury, but also uh, Steel Energy. Very cool. I really like it. I like being able to not die from Mystic's, especially when I don't have printed reducers. So this Dracula is like the first thing that comes to mind out of all the things that can steal energy. He's one of my favorite vampire dials just because it's not exactly hard to get him to top dial, but he is a lot of points, and he's point-costed specifically because of that top dial. But to be yeah. fair, at 220 points, if you get him to charge Flurry Stealth uh, a 13 for 5 with Exploit, and then his Blood Armor, it's kind of worth it. Like even today's standards, it's it's kind of worth it. You know, Simeon, if I was a betting man, I would have put money on you saying Rune. Uh, yeah, that's also a, a vampire character I played a lot of. Uh, two ways to heal, not just steel energy, but like 
It was like, what, if you hit a character that was 100 points or more or had the Cosmic Energy team ability, you also just healed another one. Also a character very easy to get top dial. Yeah. Um, and I loved putting the uh, the gauntlet on him, the pick a power gauntlet, because I would always pick flurry so that I could charge flurry people. Um, so I I also chose Dracula. I did not choose the Dracula you chose. However, um, I chose the, a classical, much more classic version of Dracula you Spider-Man, Dracula. So second figure from Amazing Spider-Man on my list. Uh, this is also the second time we've... So now it's the four, we're four for four on choosing characters that are the same character, and now we're two for two on characters that are the same character but different versions of that mm. character. Um, but yeah, so the Amazing Spider-Man, Dracula, for six points less, I will say the top dial not as impressive. This is a few... It was about a year before uh, the Fear Itself Dracula, but I love this one. He's he's not as cool of a sculpt. He is very much a classic horror movie Dracula. He's got his little black, bluish suit. He's got his big old cape outing his sh- uh, shoulders here. He does have a traded stealth. Which... Then he's got some other cool mind control and all that jazz. But, you know, once again, steel energy, vampiric hunger, uh, 11 for 4, top green click dial. He does get up to a 12 for 5 with hypersonic, impervious, and prob. Always love it when you have prob on... A twelve attack. Fun fact, uh, but yeah, play no. a reverse dial, and they don't have a choice but to hit you to that. Not True. necessarily top dial, but definitely hit you no. to like the the better clicks. Better clicks, yeah, yeah. yeah that's actually yeah, no terrible choice. advice. And don't do that. No, I don't do that with vampires. Please don't. <laughs> uh, last, and I will say certainly not least, maybe the most used attack power ever. Oh yeah, telekinesis. Right. So say, telekinesis. This is a tough one. One that everyone, uh, not everyone, but a lot of people make sure is on their team. I know in Sealed, yeah. I love having it on my team um, almost as much as like Psychic Blast. Um, telekinesis. So telekinesis is essentially like a transportion kind of thing, right? Like you, you transport yeah. someone from one spot to yeah. another. So I, I went with uh, good old uh, United Federations of Planet Miles O'Brien. Of the oh, uh, gosh. USS Whatever. Enterprise. Yeah. Quiet. Uh, <laughs> so. Not even Lieutenant Kyle. Interesting. No. Was Kyle was not my transporter tech. It was always it was always O'Brien. I will say okay. he is a much more expensive, much more lackluster TK piece. But he also has that whole, um, if he doesn't have any action tokens, zero or, or no, zero or one action tokens, friendly characters that are adjacent or have the Starfleet keyword can use super senses. And when they succeed, you give him an action token and place that character adjacent to him. So okay. on a Starfleet theme team, he could really get people out of trouble. Like he just gave everyone super senses. And if he stayed towards the back, they just got zapped next to him. And technically that's not any of the, the telekinesis portion, but he does so have a, a classic, whatsoever. classic sidestep TK. There you go. Yeah. Good classic. Good class. Um, I kind of cheesed out for this last pick. It, it was the first character that came to mind, and maybe I feel a little bad. I shouldn't say that. It's the second character that came to mind. Jean Grey was the first character that came to mind. But then I was like, nah, you know, respect where respect is due. Mr. Oz, the TK King, this guy. What yeah. a dude. What I want to say, yeah, somebody that redefined TK for a, a long portion of the game. And uh, there's actually somebody, oh, it's the TK Flash that works in a similar capacity right. but not quite yeah. the same but it's almost obvious that it was like um uh, i don't know reference material mr oz right. was probably reference material for that tk flash uh but yeah definitely an underutilized 40 points almost no one ever played mr oh. oz yeah no one ever played mr oz i don't know why you know especially how he could affect your opponent's team yeah probably that terrible so range value when he used prob yeah uh, right, only 12, 12 squares is not enough. Boring, a See ton of everything. It's yeah. not good for prob. It's, it's just not good. Bad. It's not. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, so guys, you can look forward to us answering the defense powers portion of Malcolm's questions next week. Um, you know, any little, any little shout outs before we end the show? We, we are in full X of Swords swing after all. We already shouted out our video. I would go check out Happy Little Hero Hooks unboxing video. It got the, um, SRX Chase, who Simi was telling me about before the show. Oh, yeah. Really, really cool. So, you know, Professor check X out, Chase obviously. And, and WizKids, the Super WizKid. 
not Ooh, whiz kids. I didn't even realize there was a whiz kid in this yeah, set. Yeah, oh, man, a super I gotta watch whiz kid. I will say, uh, compared to the Deadpool Super oh, no. Prime, oh no, yeah, eh. like this one's oh, still oh, very cool, very flavorful. I do love oh, the right. fact that it's just Professor X's like floating chair, but colored red. Um, but Is yeah, it? it's it's a fun sculpt and it's a really fun dial. I actually well, think I will say like so. I, I sound like I I'm not impressed with the dial. It's definitely oh. a super utility. Utility oh, okay. piece that could definitely like work in certain situations. Um, I can't remember exactly how it works, but I know off the top of my head, it like can copy the attack and damage of like an adjacent character in some way, and so you could potentially copy like a twelve for four or something. Um, that's sure. not like out outside the realm of a possibility, you know. Or a, a twelve for three would be pretty easy if you're playing like Hawkeye or something like that, you know. Um, very cool character, though. Yeah. All right. And uh, at um, this point, we've almost seen the majority of the main set. We still haven't seen a ton of dials for the OP, the organized play version of the yeah, set. That's going like, to be happening. a minute before we see all those, though. It's yeah. going to be a hot, hot second moon, though, as we, as we wait patiently, semi patiently. I just really want to get like the organized play like happening. You know, Cap, like, that's that's what I'm all about. I'm like, you know, let me some organized play. I just want to get right in there. I want to see... I kind of don't want to see any of the organized play dials until it's, like, actually time to, like, buy the booster, roll ice. If just, that's what I would, like, prefer if I could with, like, a sealed organized play set. Yeah. Um, but I won't argue if WizKids wants to show them off, you know? I but like uh, that, that grand prize apocalypse that we saw is definitely going to get more people uh, sh- heading out to play than oh, like, maybe... Time. Right? originally we're intending to that's what a grand prize should be it should make me want to like go out and you know join yeah. the organized play and play in it even though i have like i don't really want to but it's like whoa the grand prize is so awesome i want to keep you know doing it every single month it's like oh it should be i be. still want to see what the uh what is it uh the the lord of the rings guy the drogol door guy um What's his name? Um, it's it's something like uh, oh Pog or Pog. I really oh, want to see what, right. what the it's big old weird. dinosaur alligator. I don't yeah. know what his deal is, but he's got extra arms and he's huge. He's got Go weird stuff going on. Pog or Pog. Uh, all right. So I feel fairly confident then in uh, saying goodbye till till next week, guys. However, we're gonna be posting a bunch of stuff on the YouTube channel. If you haven't already checked it out yet. Uh, check out our unboxing video. We already mentioned that, but coming soon to the YouTube channel is going to be a thousand subscriber subscribers giveaway update video. We're going to be going over the rules of the subscriber giveaway. We're going to be telling you how you can enter to win, all that fun stuff. So make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. Hit that little bell notification button so that we can go uh, stay updated on that video. Obviously, if you enjoyed the podcast, you guys can support us at Patreon.com. It's a great avenue, really, to just hang out with you guys. We hang out in the Discord quite a bit, either playing some Bad Sam or just chatting it up with our Patreon members. That, to me, is, like, the best thing you get from Patreon. You also get some pretty awesome action tokens and stickers that were uh, designed by Luke with, uh, you know, me and Simeon's old mugs slapped on them. So if you want some cool action tokens, you want some cool stickers, and, uh, you know, a lot of the bystanders that come out in new sets, we give... Uh, give a little dial age treatment too so if you're interested in stuff like that join our patreon and you know send us questions we get a lot of questions through patreon which is super fun we also get questions like how malcolm sent us questions on facebook.com and twitter that's dial h4 it's the number four uh hero clicks on twitter if you guys want to send us questions in those dms that's always super duper appreciated but uh thank you guys so much for listening to the show we have all sorts of really 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 cool stuff coming down the dial age pipeline here in the coming months. I think you're going to be very excited. Yeah. And if you want some cool stuff coming down the pipeline, you should check out coolstuffinc.com where you can find not only just the latest, greatest Heroclix stuff, you can get your pre-orders in, all those kinds of things, uh, but you can also pick up some cool games like uh, board games and stuff. So check them out, coolstuffinc.com. Happy trails.
So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Epic trails.